Hello there. James here from Boster Bio. In today's video, we are going to learn about antibody conjugation. Please remember to like and subscribe to our channel to ensure you are updated as we post informational content on different subjects such as ELISA, IHC, Western blotting, and even immunofluorescence. What is antibody conjugation? Conjugation is the method of adding an antigen to a larger molecule that ensures that the antigen stimulates the immune response that generates antibodies. In this video, we shall be looking at the best practices for antibody conjugation. So, what is a conjugated antibody? Conjugated antibodies are high-performance monoclonal or polyclonal antibodies. They are coupled to a colorimetric or fluorescent label for use as reporter molecules in primary or secondary antibody immunoassays. Boster conjugates are designed to be used in a variety of applications, such as ELISA, Western blot, immunofluorescence, immunohistochemistry, flow cytometry, and others while working across multiple imaging platforms. A conjugated antibody is also known as a labeled or tagged antibody. It is one that has been bound to a substrate, such as an enzyme, toxin, or inorganic compound. Why is conjugation important? B lymphocytes develop antibodies to foreign antigens they encounter. Nevertheless, the antigen must be significant enough for the immune system to provide a humoral response, i.e. a reaction containing antibodies secreted by B cells. Therefore, in order to generate an antibody for a particular antigen, the researcher should ensure that the antigen is part of a significantly large molecular complex to initiate a humoral response. Let's check out the protocol for antibody conjugation. You need to add 30 microliter of 0.75 molar sodium bicarbonate, pH 8.3, to 200 microliters of primary antibody, label 5 to 8 tubes of primary antibody to minimize waste of dye as it loses stability when dissolved. Dissolve the 1 mg vial of succinamidyl ester dye in 100 microliters DMSO. Slowly add 12.5 to 20 microliter of dye to each vial of primary antibody while vortexing the solution. Shake the tubes for 1 hour at room temperature. We have used a bacterial shaker at 200 rpm. Add 20 microliter of freshly prepared 1.5 molar hydroxylamine, pH 8.5 to each tube and shake for 1 H at room temperature. Dialyze using 2 liters of PBS in the dark at room temperature for 2 hour. We have then stored at 4 degrees Celsius without adding preservatives, but adding BSA and or sodium azide is recommended in the original protocol. It is always good to remember that no protocol is given for antibody purification after conjugation, e.g., protein X or protein Z. In general, we do not purify our conjugates directed against cell surface antigens, since the unreacted dye is removed during the washing steps. Our conjugates generally have low background levels. However, you may find it useful to purify conjugates especially if they are to be used for intracellular, cytoplasmic, staining. The conjugations fall into four basic protocols. Type 1, used for FITC, Psi 5, and the initial preparation of the Psi 5 and Psi 7 tandem dyes. Type 2, used for biotin and cascade blue. Type 3, used for conjugation of PE, APC, TRBSA and their derivatives, and type 4, used for the initial preparation of non-immunoglobulin proteins like Annex and V. Buffers for all type 1 reactions are identical, as for type 2, etc. Some buffers are identical across the different reaction protocols. Below are some popular conjugates. The two most popular conjugates also referred to as carrier proteins to which antigens bind are keyhole limpet hemocyanin, KLH, and bovine serum albumin, BSA. These two molecules are highly immunogenic, 
hence they are the best at activating humoral response that creates antibodies directed against the antigen. Another conjugate is ovalbumin, ova, the main protein found in egg whites. Ova is soluble in polar reagents, making it a strategic carrier for antigens that are also polar. Here are the techniques for exposing specific parts of the antigen to the immune system. The N-terminal and C-terminal of polypeptides contain distinct chemical moieties that are ideal for various types of reactions that result in covalent bonds. Moreover, the side chains of the amino acid residues in the polypeptide often have chemical moieties that can be used to create desired covalent bonds with a carrier protein. This strategy allows antibody developers to ensure that the antigen is oriented to the carrier protein in such a way that the antibodies produced by the immune response recognize the desired antigen epitope. Commonly used chemical cross-linkers used to affect the orientation of antigens to carrier proteins are glutaraldehyde, carbidemide, benzidine and succinamide esters. These are the steps to isolate antibodies that bind only to the antigen. Since antigens attached to carrier proteins are engulfed and digested along with carrier proteins, the antibodies produced by the immune response will consist of antibodies that bind to different combinations of antigen carrier fragments. This is problematic for an assay that involves a pure antibody solution that only binds to the antigen. Extra purification steps need to be taken in order to isolate the desired antibodies from those that recognize the carrier protein only or a fragment that contains both antigen and carrier. Thank you for learning with us about antibody conjugation, why it is important and how to do it, including tips on making it successful. To watch out for our many informative videos like this, remember to like and subscribe to this channel. For any queries on our products find our contact here, or reach us at www.bosterbio.com.